Hey friend, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the reason why you haven't found your artistic style. I have three reasons why you haven't found your style. And in this video, it's gonna be something kind of surprising reasons or different reasons than what you've maybe found in a Google search or from an artist online. The first thing that I wanna say before I get into those three reasons is that your style or style is not a destination. It's not something that you find like a little pebble on your walk and it's there, poof, you have your style and that's it. Style is something that's more like a path. It's something that is going to wind. It's sometimes gonna be straight. It's sometimes you're gonna have scenery that has like a lake. Sometimes it's gonna be very boring scenery or just trees. So you're gonna always be exploring, always be adding things to that path because you're always growing and hopefully practicing so that your artistic um, style and journey and creativity is always changing and growing. This doesn't mean that in every quarter or every six months that your style is gonna completely change because of the colors you use, the composition or whatever, that could stay consistent, but you're always gonna be improving and getting better and growing. And so therefore your style should be improving and growing as you continue painting and practicing and developing your creativity skills. So to get into the reasons why you haven't found your artistic style, let's start with number one, to let your interests and your curiosities guide your way. So a lot of times, especially with modern the modern world, technology, social media, following people's tutorials, which I highly recommend doing, I'm not telling you to stop following tutorials, um, but a lot of times it can be difficult to not bombard your mind with everyone else's work, like following tutorials or finding inspiration online from another artist before you start painting. And you can kind of get down this rabbit hole of just painting things that are on trend or painting things that you see because you're following a tutorial or you really like somebody's work, which is totally fine, but you can get yourself into these holes or creative ruts of just kind of uh, being a copy machine and not really being somebody who's following what's really inside, what's at your core, what you're actually interested in, what you're curious about. So it could be that you're really, you really um, gravitate or interested in more moody, more depth in color, but you follow a lot of artists who paint very vibrant colors or a certain style or certain way of composing their flowers or composing their landscapes or whatever. So because it's what you're seeing and you're constantly consuming that, you're pursuing what other people are interested in or what other people are curious about instead of really honing in on what you're curious about or what your interests are. And a lot of times that comes down to what your inner guidance system is telling you or what you feel um, inspired by in outside modalities like fashion or weaving or ceramics or your home styling. Um, so get down to what outside influences you really are passionate about, what outside interests and curiosities you might ha have, and kind of notice some common themes. So for example, in my decorating style, I love pops of color, but I love really clean lines. And so having florals that are a bit more clean and um, with vibrant pops of color is something that speaks to me instead of having really messy um, floral, loose floral style or something that's a bit more earth tone or more realistic tones because I like those vibrant pops of color. So try and pursue things or let your interests and your curiosities lead your way with developing your style and pursue things that maybe you don't see on Instagram or maybe you haven't seen another artist do yet just to see what happens. It might turn out, you know, poopy, but you might find a little piece that you like or a little section of a painting that you like. You can cut that out and put it in your journal, write out what you liked about it or what you would change for next time, what you would incorporate and leave behind for next time. Let your interests and your curiosities lead the way. The second reason you're not developing or finding your artistic style is that you're not really developing or paying attention to your observation skills. So observation skills leads me into sketching, which is being a student of the beautiful world around you. The ordinary things can really be extraordinary when you're really just sitting with the present moment, the surroundings around you and observing what's around you. So I like to take a pencil, my favorite pencil, it can be an HB pencil, 2B pencil. You don't have to be trained in sketching. This is you training yourself in sketching, you training yourself in being more present in your life, being more observant and a student of the world around you. So take a pencil, a journal, or a piece of paper, whatever, and just sit in your front yard, your backyard, your patio, whatever, go to a park that you love, 
and just find something that you can study. Maybe it's, maybe it's a flower, maybe it's a tree, maybe it's a ladybug on the ground. Notice how many spots are on that ladybug. How many legs does the ladybug have? If you can see that tiny detail or for a flower, what position is it taking? What, what direction is it facing? How many petals does it have? Is the center kind of a bulb or a dome or is it more of a peak like a cone? Um, so really pay attention to what's around you hone in on developing those observation skills. That is one of the biggest things. Obviously it's in my top three reasons. You haven't found your artistic style, but that's one of the biggest things that I notice, especially nowadays, is that people are so used to following tutorials, so used to looking up inspiration online that it's really difficult for them to just sit and observe what's around them or a live subject or whatever and observe it and be a student of it and translate that into the medium of art. If you struggle with doing that, sketching or painting from the world around you, start with writing. So take your journal, favorite pad of paper, whatever, and start describing what you're seeing. This is really gonna help you, even though it's a different medium of creativity, it's gonna really help you, help you visualize through the language center in your brain what that subject or what you're, whatever you're studying looks like, the colors it has, the shape it's taking, the direction it's facing, how many petals it has, all of that kind of stuff. And that's gonna help you hone in that foundational artistic element that everybody needs, which is being an observer or honing in on those observation skills. And then my third reason you haven't found your artistic style kind of ties in the, to the top two reasons as well. And that is because you're playing the comparison game. So you're comparing yourself too much to other people out there on the internet the YouTube people, the Instagram artists, the whatever, or maybe it's Matisse, maybe it's Picasso, maybe it's whatever. And comparison is the thief of joy. But beyond that, it is also something that can initiate a lot of negative core beliefs or negative self-talk that happens in a lot of artists. It's very common, especially in beginners, but it happens throughout everybody's artistic journey. So that comes up as things like perfectionism, fear of failure, imposter syndrome. And when we really boil it down, perfectionism, fear of failure, imposter syndrome, all of these things really come down to our negative self-talk or our negative core beliefs. Maybe it's come up through, um, you know, the way we were parented or a teacher we had in third grade or whatever. Um, but all of us have these negative core beliefs that we need to first discover, identify, and then dismantle. But when you're comparing yourself to other artists, um, the loudest voice in your own head is your self. It's your negative self-talk. And that is something that we as artists and as creative people and everyone in general, we are all creators, but we all need to identify and work on that negative self-talk um, because it's going to be a huge hindrance in our development as an artist, developing our own style and just getting out of our own heads. A lot of times it's a mental block and not just a developing the motor skill block that we need. So working on a lot of mindset stuff. I cover a lot of the stuff that I've mentioned in this video in my new course, The Art Within. Um, we talk about core negative beliefs, how to identify and dismantle them. We talk about a bunch of different modalities like mindfulness, presence and awareness, meditation, breath work, and things that I use in my own process as an artist. And then also observance and studying the world around you through foundational skills. And I have a 30 day flow state drawing exercise where every day is different and it's gonna help you study the world around you. So this is all covered very in depth in my course, The Art Within, um, but it, this will help you get started. If you're locked up or you're feeling kind of creatively stuck or blocked and you just wanna figure out what your style is or your niche or what your whatever, get started with understanding and observing those three reasons that you're maybe feeling stuck starting with the first one, which was following or letting your interests and your curiosities lead the way. Second was developing and honing in on your observation skills. And then the third one was to not let comparison kind of initiate that negative self-talk. So those three reasons, get started with those, sit with it and kind of let this all sink in. I know when I first started getting into this side of the creative journey, you know, instead of just like, I need to learn how to do this with watercolor, or I need to develop this motor skill or this muscle memory and all the technical stuff. And that is all very important, obviously. Like if, especially in the beginning phases when you're just learning watercolor or just learning a certain medium, you absolutely need to understand the foundations, the techniques and all that stuff. And it's always helpful to come back to you. However, a lot of times, um, we can get stuck in just trying to pile on the new tutorials or the new inspiration or the new this, that. Maybe if I just follow this artist, it'll be helpful or whatever, when it's really within us. And for me, when I started more 
uh, focusing and developing the mindset part of art because it's all connected um, and really working on what's going on inside of me and what I'm actually interested in, in painting or, you know, doing what I'm curious about and also what my negative core beliefs are, where I'm feeling stuck in my body, where maybe I have some mindset issues because when we are able to drop into a place of flow state, that's when we're able to create our best work. That's when motor skills and observation skills and um, everything heightened senses are just clicking and firing off. And so that place of flow is something that I, again, talk about a ton in my course, The Art Within. And I actually have two medical professionals who study flow state, alpha and theta brainwave states. And we talk about it in the course and it's fascinating and it's so much fun to talk about. So it's something that I am now weaving into my personal practice as an artist, as a creative pr process, instead of just like, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna paint this and follow this tutorial. Or I'm gonna look at this photo and replicate it. So instead of doing that, it's more of a in-depth process of going inward and letting that pour outward. So. I hope that was helpful for you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. If it was helpful for you, I'd love to know your number one takeaway in the comments below. If you wanna check out the course I mentioned, it's generaney.com forward slash the dash art dash within. Make sure to check it out, it's awesome. And then obviously don't just skip all the tutorials for the rest of your life. Maybe take a week off, maybe go inward for a day and focus on the journaling exercise or the observation exercise of sketching and then come back to the tutorials or come back to the inspiration and see what's different for you. And if you need help, maybe you're just getting started with watercolor, check out the Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor on my YouTube channel. It's basically a two hour watercolor class that shows you everything about all the techniques you need to know for watercolor. And then my Patreon is basically a monthly live art class, live Q and A's and two exclusive tutorials there on my Patreon and it comes with an art community as well, where we're all getting to know each other, asking questions, getting feedback. So check that out as well. generaney.com forward slash Patreon. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.